Take that. Yep, there it is. 90 plus degrees in every state for a two week straight. Yep. That'll go in the basket. <clears throat> oh, what's that? Uh, Tri Tristan and Corey having another baby? I, I usually don't even go for that, but I'm like, well, in the basket you go. Uh, yeah, Deshaun Watson not getting suspended at all? Yeah. Yeah, that'll go in my gold trusty hand basket. Now, I know that the general state of our country got to go. It's got to go. Yeah, our country is definitely going to hell in the handbasket. Enjoy the show. You, you know, we have a lot of expressions in the English language. I don't even know what I'm saying. What are we talking about? Where'd that come from? Most all of us use them every day. I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means. You know, we just say them as if they really made as sense. As if they really made sense. I mean, how silly is that? Do you? Yep, yep, and yep, oh, you know what it is, and you know who it is. It's me, Mario, and welcome to Appraise the Phrase, Origins of Everyday Expressions, where we're here to do three things. Unveil the origin, assess the, oh, confirm the meaning, and then assess the value of everyday common phrases. I stumbled through those three things, but I really mean those three things. As usual, I got my guy 20 in the building, sweating bullets probably, so I appreciate you, brother. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man. All good, man. I'm just very happy to be here. Very happy. We're happy, We're happy to have you. I'm saying we, because obviously, 20 and myself are not alone. But before I do that, very nice shirt, 20. Is Spider-Man your favorite Marvel? I should have asked you this before oh. we became friends. I'll be honest with you. Yes, he's probably my favorite one, but my overall favorite superhero is Batman. <laughs> you get into, you probably get into a lot of uh, theological wars in the defense oh, of, of course, Batman. Man. I yeah. see, I see, I see our, our guests looking like that. You must be a Superman fan in the house. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, let, you know what? You know what? We're gonna let her uh, speak on that directly. So be ready. But yeah, look. Because we're all so kindred here already, let me not take any more time introducing our guest for today. I'm very happy to have her on the show. She's a writer, community manager, organizer, has done all things podcaster, creative, and all around legend and legendary. Because you can be a legend and then you're doing legendary things. I like to welcome Melanie Dion to the expression appraisal table what's good mel how you feel hello hello i'm great glad to be here yeah hold on now. how are you feeling we are glad to have you we're good we're good we're good all right mel two things first wrap up tell us a little more about what you do and then let us know if 20 was on point about your favorite <laughs> superhero character address that so what don't I do? Um, no, I'm I'm a writer. I think first and foremost, I've been writing and telling people what to do my whole life. Um, literally, my first ex essay was when I was six, and I was telling people how to save money, like me, <laughs> because obviously the way I did it was right. Um, I've been a podcaster for about eight years now. Not even about like eight years. Uh, starting July first. Um, and I've done, you're right, I've done it all, soup to nuts. You know how it is when you have to be your own team. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the sound editing, the scheduling, all of that. And that grew into me being a community manager. I work with a little uh, tech tool called ResistBot. You may have heard of it. You yep. may have not heard of it. But we um, make it, we automate the process of reaching out to your representatives, your mayor, your whoever, you can actually do uh, letters to the editor, as a matter of fact, I think that's a little known feature. And really making civic engagement understandable and accessible. And it was, I, the way I started out, I started out being on the podcast yeah. and I was literally the comment girl. And they were like, you know what? I think you can moderate. Actually, you know what? I think you should start talking to people. I think you can, so it's, it's just, <laughs> morphed into this thing and it's really a an extension to of what I've always done and that's been 
amplifying mar marginalized people. Like that was one of my earliest phrases when I was a little girl was that's not fair. Yeah. And so basically <laughs> I'm like 45 and I'm still like, that's not fair. And this is what we're going to do about it. So hey. it's, uh, and I'm just an all around gal about town, cussing, gin drinking, opinionated tweeting. Tell them where you, tell them where you're from and where you're at, because they got to know. They got to know. Oh, I'm from the 504 New Orleans till I die. Hey. East show. <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> Word. Thank you. We are honored. We are honored. We are donned and honored. I am glad to be here. This is, I, I'm actually kind of a etymology. It's etymology, right? Not mm -hmm. entomology. Mm -hmm. Entomology is the bugs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I always get those confused, yep. but I'm kind of an etymology fan hey. because I like to know where stuff comes from. This so. is why. I'm excited. Okay, real I'm quick excited. before we start. And oh, um, yeah. not so much a super, I'm actually a Spidey fan. There we go. But I think Batman is an asshole, bro. Like, I don't hate him, but Batman is kind of a jerk. What listen, kind of dude listen. figures out how to neutralize all his friends? Listen, oh, listen, 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 listen. Me and one of my best friends from, I would say, probably five or six years old, we've always had this discussion. We've always felt like Batman should have been a black man. Like, he has black man problems. He just, only thing that sets him off is his, is his unlimited wealth. But the fact of the matter that you have a human amongst all these, all these, I don't want to say men's, but like these enhanced, enhanced beings and all of them fear him. Like, like you have to, you have to have so much discipline. You have to have so much determination to be the only human in the Justice League. Like the only Bat one without power. And Bat he's man. the leader. Batman could have built a hospital and instead he learned Krav Maga and I'm still trying to. <laughs> work oh no, no no don't 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 try don't try to throw shade because batman had four hospitals and, and three skyscrapers <laughs> the, 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 the way the way hospital is definitely uh <laughs> the way hospital. I mean, there were not enough yeah. clearly he, yeah, was what exactly? yeah, yeah. <laughs> he needed at least one hospital that was a little more like you had criminals running the hospital the vetting yeah. process was suspect that's Come the thing he, the management it's the management it's the management all right look the look. vetting <laughs> process was a little suspect you can learn how to kill all your friends and you don't know who's experimenting in arkham i don't buy it there's I a thing there's it. a thing there's a thing that and i'll i'll, I'll referee this because it's, it's a never ending because they uh, there's a thing i'm a spider-man fan um and that's my favorite there's a thing with with Batman that I'm I do notice I do honor him in a in a very specific way similar to what Twenty's saying but there's like a he the the no kill clause actually is a deal breaker for me for any superhero so throw Superman in there because it's like no you're doing you're doing this for you like you're superheroing for you a little bit and and believe it or not as as hard of a time as I give Batman I don't hate him I just need I feel like we need to recognize that he's kind of a dick. Like Bingo. sometimes you gotta be a dick, and 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 that's fine. But we gotta <laughs> acknowledge that he's kind of a, plus, plus, plus. There's also the thing of where did all the people who built the Batcave go? Huh? <laughs> so now we gotta get now we gotta get into him being a mass murderer. Often because ain't that many people holding that kind of secret. That's all I'm saying. Somebody will let it slip. I'm just saying somebody needs to point out the Batcave construction crew. And then that'll shut me up. That's all I'm saying. This is fair. We, we, we don't have time for this. Yeah, we got We got We got We got to get. Yeah, we got to Yeah, we got to I like I this. For we, I hey, hey, for hey, hey. Hey. So here's here's the thing. Here's my role in many to things. My role in many things is to uh, resource it and monetize it. No, really, just <laughs> so if we we could have this debate. This is actually this is a higher quality debate than I've seen regarding Batman, his do's and don'ts, his goods and, and not so goods in a long time. And they ain't gonna get no more just for for free. That's what I want. Yeah, say. I, I I recognize that. I honor that. I respect. And I want to say for the record, I do not hate him because somebody, if you're gonna have an effective crew, somebody has to be the asshole. Somebody every has to every every black sure. man in a leadership role is perceived as a dick. Oh, that hurt because you ain't lying. <laughs> he ain't lying. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> I used He's to be right. alive. He ain't lying. All right, y'all. Let's get into the. I'm about to walk away from this change. I'm gonna let it go, but I, I okay. No okay. What kind of control he has over it? If it's lie. an iron fist or if it's love, it's always perceived as this dude's an asshole. Ooh. 
because he has to be. You, you have to be in that situation. You have to be. If you got somebody that that would rather you know let the world die and save his mom, you you got to be an asshole to 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 make that decision. I think Superman's the gotta, worst hero of, of all. Superman. So if we're gonna, you think Superman huh? is the worst? I think Superman's the worst hero of all. Superman is a fairy tale. We could yeah. go. Uh, we could go into that, and, and I don't, I, I, I don't dislike Superman. I think Superman is for the You're kids. Fair, you are that's, fair. You are that's fair. That's how I, I really get deep into superhero <laughs> like lore, and I think he's super, a troll. The, he's a troll for the America. biggest mistake for Superman, and I don't want to take all of this up with that, but I think the biggest mistake with Superman, what they've done lately, is try to like darken him up as Batman, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. what he I is. Superman is is. It's not tracking. You're fantasy, right. like yeah. he is. He is something that does not exist. Superman is an ideal of what we would like to see, but nobody is like that. Nobody, yeah. And, and, and that's the struggle that they try to make a reality with. I don't I yeah. agree. He's, he's, what, he's, what, he's what America thinks it is. <laughs> he's what America thinks it is and keeps, keeps trying to, when to he convince puts on the glasses, us. When he puts on the glasses, that's what America really is. <laughs> I have a whole problem with with that and and how I can bring Superman back to blackness because literally all he does is change his hair and nobody recognizes him. As a black woman who works with white people, I used to have to deal with that shit every Monday. So <laughs> that's a whole other. This is great. That's a this whole other. Great. Actually, I almost didn't recognize you. Really, bitch, it's you, a bun. It's like the same. Would you thing. like another layer on Superman? <laughs> if, if I can. Last one. Please. Last layer. Let's the get glasses, it. The last layer. The glasses. It's an example of how America sees what they want to see. Mm. Yes. 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 Because they know it's Superman. They know They know who the oh, fuck is. There's no, there's no change at all from who the person is. But if you put oh, on the glasses, okay, you Okay. 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 Last, last layer. I'm going to bring Batman in. <laughs> last, last, last layer. For real. Okay last, <laughs> okay, okay. last one. For real. Because and this is the thing, another gripe I have with Superman and the the the, the surrounding parts of him. Because Batman, like you, people try to, he literally is like, I only come out at night. So why would Bruce Wayne be out at night, right? Like you can totally quantify this as a rich person for the most part, but like you're always like you're always always like never not once, never Clark not one time, like not once. Done with it. Done with it. It's pe it's the people choosing to believe it because he's so white. All right, y'all. Actually, the phrase I chose today, kind of, I didn't I didn't plan this this superhero uh, lovely discourse, but uh -oh. the reason why superheroes exist is comes from this phrase. I'm connecting that, and the phrase we're gonna appraise today is uh, "hell in a handbasket." <laughs> hell in a handbasket. Because superheroes <laughs> exist because the world be going to hell in a handbasket right before their eyes or a hell in a handbasket moment created their, their origin as well as the mm -hmm. villain. And, and this, is, this is just a cycle, another, another thing. So today we're going to dive into hell in a handbasket, also kind of appropriate for the current state of what we're experiencing in life. Yeah. So sorry to anybody that's like, oh, I'll be trying to forget via entertainment. I'm like, a little bit, yeah. So before we get rolling, let's uh, talk about our connections to Hell in the Handbasket. I'll have a start with 20 to set the bar, set the stage. What's your connection to Hell in the Handbasket, bro? To be honest with you, I've heard it before, but like, I would say probably less than five. And I feel like when I've heard it, it was in a movie. So it's like, I don't really have too much of a too much of a connection with it. I'll be honest with you. I don't mm -hmm. even really know what it means. Mm. So well, you gonna like, find out uh, today? I don't really have a connection with it at all, bro. Hell in the handbasket. Um yeah. What would you if think I had of? to guess it's like yeah. trouble, trouble in, in a small amount, I guess. I don't know. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Mel, let's go. I say it as a joke. Um so you usually use it. when I I, I use it like when I when I'm trying to be funny, <laughs> and and I, I definitely I definitely used it when my kids were small and they would tear my house up, <laughs> and I would say it's going to hell in a handbasket. 
Um, I always use it when I'm being super dramatic. <laughs> I've never used it like realistically, I guess. I mean, I don't think that counts as using it ironically, but mm -hmm. I've never used it seriously. I'm always just doing the most. And usually, even when I would say hell in a handbasket, it's usually like with me joking with my kids more than yeah. anything else. But that was the biggest, that was because my kids were two years apart. So my husband mm. was always going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That two years don't even <laughs> so, mean a lot once they're, <laughs> like, how? Yeah. I, I just separated by two years, yet <laughs> there's never been a gap of Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. When you have two years, two kids, two years apart, your house sounds like you have 50 people in it. So... <laughs> Just um <laughs> and that was and that was so that's how that's what my life was hell in a handbasket hell it was always handbasket. something going on yeah so it's it's a phrase that i've always found entertaining and then since i love like word origins i'm always like who brought the handbasket who wove it like i'm ridiculous so it's also that yes. this is the question doing the most. Ask, right so let's um let's get into webster's definition of hell in a handbasket because i think this is great we're on opposite ends of the spectrum here um, for me, yeah, yeah. I've I've heard it. I, I'm a I'm a I'm a PK. You know what I mean. But it was like you know it was non denominational, so it was kind of like doing what you want. P, uh, PK. Have Have you used it? Have Mario? I used it? Um, I've used it as a joke. Uh, I think I've heard people use it seriously. Like well, be dead. I, I was just about to say. I'm wondering if it's more of a a comical thing than actual. Well, I would ahead. say, based on my experience. Like the one person that says it's serious for every one person that says it's serious, the response is for people saying it not seriously because the okay. one person said it seriously. That's how I feel about it. But the Webster Webster's defines hell in a handbasket as simply to deterior deteriorate rapidly. So something that's just deteriorating rapidly, i.e., having children in the home. No. Yes. <laughs> Just Which we all can can connect with. I mean, the quality you know. of life plummets. Yes, the comedy yes. escalates. Yes, when, yes. When everything else, everything else is deteriorating around us rapidly. So, with that being said, I see a, a look on your face, twenty. So I'm gonna toss it. Typically, I go reverse order. But I'm gonna toss it right back to you. What 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 where where are you at with the the definition of of a uh, yeah I'm still I'm still trying to figure out the best way to use it I mean I understand the whole I understand of course like you said we are, we evolve in that situation where we have kids in a small place so it's like is that is that like hmm I'm trying to figure out how to use it because I want it seems like something that you can be useful but it's like <laughs> I want to I want to use it correctly. Yeah. Instead of just using it just to be like, because my kids are jumping on a, on the couch, I don't want to use it in that sense and be like, uh, and it's and it's wrong. No, no, yeah. dad, because my uh, daughter will tell me if I'm wrong or not. Oh, she can't wait. Mel, help him out a little bit. Now that you hear the definition and you already so, connected with it. I feel like the definition doesn't really give the depth of how I was right. I taking agree. the that's frame. What, that's, Webster's does that. So that's what I'm at Webster's too. does that. Yeah. So to me, like hell in a handbasket is not only the rapid deterioration, but it's like it's all packaged up and ready to go. Like this is this is what it is now. It's all concentrated in this one little basket yeah. of bullshit. Bullshit. And here's the <laughs> so thing. like her jumping on the sofa would not necessarily be things going to hand, hell in a handbasket. Yeah. But if she's jumping in the sofa and she's kicking her shoe off and she done kicked the cushion over and then punched the dog in the face, <laughs> and now this living room is going to hell in a handbasket. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. okay. Does that so help a little more, bit? It's more than, it's, it's a cumulative of things. It's experiential. Yeah, and the yeah. thing I don't like about the definition that you mentioned is like the focus on the rate at which it's deteriorating and not the volume at yeah. which it's deteriorating, man. Because it's not like I feel like I feel like volume, and it's also like you're on a path, like mm -hmm, you're just mm -hmm. skipping down with your bullshit basket mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of hellaciousness. Yeah, like you're you're at and you're and That's it, the, it's steady and it's. Mm. Like when you think of, like if somebody says this world is going to hell in a handbasket, like mm -hmm. if it's America is going to hell in a handbasket, mm -hmm. that means you're looking at politics, you're looking at, you know, 
discourse you're looking at. It's just, Everything. and it's all this concerted effort almost. Yeah, it's not like it's just random chaos. It's like it's almost working in concert to just yeah, 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 yeah. blossom into a mushroom cloud of fuck shittery. Exactly, and that's why connecting it back to why I've heard it seriously. The church loves to do that. And I'm not like a I'm not a church for basher for the sake of church bashing, but the 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 facilitators of the environment, you'll get them to say like I because the thing the choices are being made around us that the world is going to hell in a handbasket every 3.5 business days is going to hell in a handbasket. Right, so it's going to hell in a handbasket because they took prayer out of school. Exactly, like that exactly. Like I feel like I'm sorry to interrupt. I feel no, like no. that's how I've heard it. I've ever going. I, I think the going to hell instead of just saying hell in the handbasket. Mm -hmm. I guess the going to hell in the handbasket. I guess that kind of uh, gotcha. Gotcha. That's a good point. That's a good point. We can add it. We can, add it. we can add it. We can add it. We can add it. We can add it to the phrase. Because I'm, I'm just like I'm. I'm saying is like, like, like. Everything is going like like you say. If you say it's going to hell in a the handbasket, then yeah, yeah, everything is going wrong. That that mm -hmm. tells me everything is going wrong, and that there doesn't seem to be an end of mm -hmm. what's going. On. Well, look, y'all. The title just changed. Uh oh. <laughs> in the middle of that, we're going to add the going. You've made it. You've made a point. Oh, okay. You've made a point. Life point. is about evolution. We we yeah. Because I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm I was trying to be a part of y'all conversation for the first time. <laughs> 20 minutes, but I could, I was trying to jump on Mario. You was calling me out. I'm over here thinking to myself. And saying, they looking up I to the left and right. Your face. I see you have a look of. Uh, I was like, damn, nigga, just let me. Uh, <laughs> let me see if I can understand this shit real quick. Well, that's what the show is for. For us to talk about how we do or don't understand it. When Batman, yeah, okay, when right Batman's there. methods were used to neutralize the whole Justice League, <laughs> the Justice League was going. <laughs> Justice League went to the handbasket for one second, thanks to Batman. You know what? I would say that I think it was it was the them finding out that he used that he he had that. You get what I'm saying? Because it wasn't Batman that was using. Look at you. Look right. at you. No, it Apologies. was his his methods, not him doing it. So so I feel like it to 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 rightly describe it. I would say when all of all the methods was getting used against the Justice League. And that's that kind of like in a way of saying the Justice League is going to hell in the handbasket, I guess. Well, look at because this. Everybody look at this. There. Learning is I'm, fun. I'm understanding now, bro. I'm understanding. Learning is fun. I'm look, now. We're, we're, I think we're in proper position to get into the origin. So let's do it. Perfect. Hey, you know, Batman did leave this thing to be playing because he's the only human there. So it wouldn't be... <laughs> The binder didn't work for like he had to get that. The binder did not work for he had to get that last little Batman apologetic apologist nature. And you out. said we can talk during the. I did. I did. Oh, it, it, yeah, you did say that. I did. Oh, I definitely you said that. that. I'm gonna leave that in because it's it flows well. Now, <laughs> <laughs> the first point, the first origin points. Let's get into the fact that um, the origin of this phrase is much debated. Um, no one has settled in on one. Um, creator of going to hell in a handbasket, um, but it start it, it it it's agreed upon that it started around the 18th century, um, and some like to think because when folks were uh, guillotined that their heads were caught in a basket, so that's where things going awry, connecting to a basket sits, and as we'll start to see, that's kind of where. The basket kind of just stays. So, the earliest oh, that yeah, that'll do it. The earliest visualization of um, going to hell in a handbasket um, has religious connotations, specifically to the stained glass windows, which were a big deal um, in the Fairford Church in Gloucestershire. And uh, my guy Hieronymus Bosch painted those. I mean, his painting, he didn't do the, the stained glass, sorry, but he painted another painting, um, and both these occurred uh, in the 1500s um, with Bosch's painting finishing up around 1515. So the first images of it came, but it wasn't a hand basket. The basket came later with the guillotine thing, but um, Bosch's painting portrayed and depicted a cart, a big, large cart of, of hay with people on it, 
And they were being drawn to hell, dragged to hell in this painting. And right. that's where like, yeah, this is the thing that's going on. So let's talk about um let's talk about this uh painting. It's called the Haywin. H A Y W A I N if you want to look up. It's actually not that bad. You know, some some of these European paintings and that, that are have religious undertones, like they look like they're cursed and they look like if you look at them too long that you are catching the European. But um, this one actually doesn't look that bad. So this painting, the central panel, is the one we're talking about. Um, and it features a large wagon of hay surrounded by mm-hmm. a multitude of what are described as fools uh, engaged in all types of sins. Now, I looked at the painting. I looked at I actually zoomed in. So I'm like, what sins am I supposed to be seeing here? Now, again, I invite every listener and viewer to go check it out. I won't lead on those sins because I'd be interested to see what y'all found. Um, but the lust was one that uh, was the one, right? And it was um, juxtaposed. So there's a three panel painting and the left painting was the Garden of Eden. So like lust coming closest to that panel, like was, I guess, significant. And then there's an angel on top of the wagon and he's praying like, oh man, these people are stupid. And uh, Jesus, Jesus Christo, Christ, is at the top of the painting looking down on the world. Um, but he's not like near nobody or nothing. And then on the right side of the, the, the middle panel, so the right panel is actually hell. And they actually look like they're having a party. Like no one looks despondent. He didn't draw it where they look despondent, but that wagon is headed that way. And the way the painting is, it's supposed, you're supposed to lead your eye from left to right. And you see these people being drawn, um, through with this, this hayride, this hayride to hell. Uh, and that is the first depiction of that. Now, before I open the floor back up, let's talk about Bosch a little bit and why he would paint such a thing in the way he painted it and how it led to this catching on as an idea. So Bosch um, or, and, and lived in the 1500s, but 20th century folks started to look at his stuff, which he, had a, he, had a, he has a few important works, um, some that didn't make it, some that did. And this one made it, and they thought he was um, inspired by, like, the heretics and her- heretical point of view, so people that did not rock with religion at all. Um, and that he was, like, influenced by that and drew this picture to almost mock the idea of um, going to hell. Because, again, like I said, what I noticed about the hell side is that nobody looked like they were suffering. It just was like a party. It was just darker, and there was nothing to, like, no resources or whatever. But... Um, Others that actually followed the times um, in the 16th century um, and looked at it deeper was like Bosch was really just a um, like he was a, 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 a artist that wanted to amuse people and like almost um, like discourse and he wanted to be provocative. So it was almost like a joke. Um, and some of the, the quotes from people during his time, like Spaniard uh, Felipe de Guevara said that Bosch was regarded as the inventor of monsters and chimeras. I don't know what a chimera is. All my uh, Spanish-speaking folk, feel free to let me know if that is folklore in your culture. But um, And then um, a biographer of the 17th century described Bosch's work as wondrous and strange fantasy. So he was like kind of just outside the box thinking. So I'm going to go against the 20th century folks because they got an agenda deeper than probably the 16th century studyists. And I think that he was just, you know what I'm saying, making making a nice little like this, what it would be like if <laughs> if we really headed there. So that's kind of where it laid its foundation, uh, 1500, 16th century with these paintings of the stained glass. Um, and then the bigger thing with the painting, Bosch's painting. Um, and then with the baskets being uh, where guillotine heads are caught. So let me open up the floor for thoughts. Mel, tell me your first thoughts on my man Bosch is painting and what, what, what you caught me saying. So, um, I don't disagree with, with your take on it. Like it looks like hell is, I mean, are they having an orgy in hell? What's going on? That, What's that, going that, on that that like a, a, it's like, it's like a time. It's a little light over there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, no, I could see that being the, I can see that being the origin like that. I, it's a, 
I, I really, I actually really like the painting. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, like this isn't the more typical like Europeans painting. Yeah, because it's 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 kind of like a, a a three parter, and I'm not used to that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, just by the by the way, because I'm kind of a nerd, it's a chimera, and ah. that's a mythological creature. It's a fire breathing, um, mythological monster. It has a lion's head, and I think it's like three things. It's a lion's head, a serpent's tail. I think I've seen this. And I think it's also part goat. Yeah, I think I've seen this. That's the, yeah. Gotcha. Um, oh, okay. So he was, he was drawing yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, and there are other other terms. Of, but as far as that, like for that time, that's what, a, like from, from the artist's perspective, that's what a chimera is. It's like the a three-part mm, beast. Actually, I'm not. And I think it's female <laughs> I think chimeras are women or female yeah oh. um yeah, deep dive on them yeah it's it's very i mean i love mythological monsters it's weird <laughs> they're weird and and a chimera is like really really out there uh fun fact they used that was like the disease they created for i want to say mission impossible too but anyway Ooh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> um no i do agree though that I can see how how hell in a handbasket would definitely come from that painting or the the because it does look like they're being carted mm -hmm, right on into the hell. It kind of looks like a statement on. I agree that it's kind of a statement to provoke. It's you know especially like the 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 teachings of the church like the it almost looks like the real suffering is here mm. and hell is a little yeah because the two like it almost looks like. Cool. Yeah, it almost looks like, yeah, hell is wild, but it's not as bad as what you're dealing with right now. Yeah. Because they look sick on earth. Yes, they like the, they look like down bad. And then the left side is like, yeah, pretty, pretty picture. And then the right side is like, yeah, yeah, yeah they're weird looking, but they don't look like, they don't look mad. They don't look mad. Right. It's like, you know. 20, well, yeah. Look like the old girl is on a date. I don't know. Yeah, they I don't know. Like this. It's, it's speed dating even. Like, he ugly, but who among us? Yeah. I'm in hell. It's probably the best I got. We all, we all got a little, you know, booger wolf in our past somewhere. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Where you at? Getting a wolf. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, 20. It's fine. It's fine. We all just love. Even, even hell monsters. Yeah, even hell monsters. Mm. Um, well, with me, you know, you know, everything has to have a backstory with me. I feel like uh, the saying is going towards more of a religious statement um, of, you know, um, like somebody is telling them like, all right, this is what you do to, you know, not go to hell or whatever the case may be. And it's one of those statements that says like, you're, you're catching people in the act and saying, all right, see, this is why you guys are going to hell. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, yeah. like, so this is like, why. like when you depict the picture, when you depict the picture, it's already a, um, a statement of you guys are going down instead of a statement of repent and you'll be saved type of deal. Like ah. it's already, it's already going yeah. down that you guys are going to hell. You guys are, it's already stated that you're doing this, you're going nice and neat in the smallest package, whatever the case may be, but you guys are on your way to it. You get what I mean? It's like more of a statement than actual, you know, opinion or, or, yeah. or say for me. Yeah. That, you know um, what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. it's like back in those days, you know, the church was trying to scare you with anything. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. Church is trying to scare you out of everything. So if, if, if I'm going off of the picture, for me, it's like one of those statements where like they're damning you already. Yeah, I, I, I think we're like all that. born into sin, right? Right, right. Even so though like, we're all born into sin, even though we're all born into sin, it's like a, a damning type of uh, statement as opposed to, you know. Oh, it's not a helpful to... statement. It's not a, like a savior statement. It's a damn. Okay, okay. That takes the fun out. And that's because, again, again, there's people that say it seriously and they, I mm -hmm. think they are saying, like, look, you're already, you're on your way. You're on your way. Now, if you go ahead, if the same, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mario, because like from from with that, that reminds me of a statement that, you know, like I feel like my family would say, like, you're going to hell with gasoline draws on or something like that. Yes, you know what which I'm is saying? another iteration. Like that's, 
that's a, that's one of the, like my personal statements that I feel like is actually in the realm of what you're what you guys are, what 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 this saying is saying. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you're you're you've already made your bed. Now you're you're about to live in it. You know what I'm saying? You're on your way to sleeping in your own bed. Gotcha. All right. I like that. I like these takes. I like these takes. So well, this was the visual depiction. Depiction. What the hell? This was the visual depiction of Hell in a Handbasket. Again, 16th century. Very prominent. This guy, like we 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 talked about, evoke, provoke, get a feeling about it. The church is obviously dominant. But the first time it was written, you got to fast forward to the 17th century, the end of the 17th century, 1682. And it was uh, in the weekly uh, paquette uh, from Rome. And it said that noise of a popish plot was nothing in the world, but an intrigue of the Whigs to destroy the king's best friends and the devil fetch me to hell in a handbasket. If I might have my will, there should not be one fanatical dog left alive in three kingdoms. So I'm going to read it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I don't know what side this person is saying, what side they're on. And I got to catch that again. So that noise of a popish plot was nothing in the world, but an intrigue to the Whigs to destroy the King's best friends and the devil fetch me to hell in a handbasket. If I might have my will, there should not. Okay. <laughs> There should not be one fanatical dog left alive in three kingdoms. So he's like, whoever the wigs are, you know the wigs. He's like, look, whatever they was on, I'm not with it. And if it was up to me, I'm going with, I'm going with, the, I'm going to, I'm going with the devil. Ride me to, to hell in the handbasket to make sure that none of these niggas is left. None of these niggas love. I'm ready to go to hell in the handbasket. That said. sounds like the inspiration for hit 'em up. <laughs> it it very much has some first off fuck your bitch and the click your claim to it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like what are y'all on? And matter of fact, I'm so not with y'all on. I'm willing to go as deep and dark as it gets to make sure yeah. y'all are gone. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's what yeah. he said. That's what he said. Yeah. Now to flip that, <laughs> to flip mm-hmm. that conversely, but almost uh, twenty. I hope I hope you catch this on, from what you were saying. So there's an English preacher, um, and this is 1618, so a little bit before this, um, Thomas Adams, and he actually referred to, using the same essence, referred to it as going to heaven in a wheelbarrow, and he said that in, in God's bounty, and he said, "Oh, this oppressor that is one who was wealthy but gave little to the church." <laughs> Mm -hmm. (laughs) must needs go to heaven what shall hinder him but it will be as the byword is in a wheelbarrow the the fiends and not the angels will take hold of him so (laughs) he was saying I'll say it again the suppressor Mm -hmm. that got money and gave very little to the church he's supposed how else is he going to get to heaven well I guess it'll be in a wheelbarrow by the fiends and not the angels meaning he meant it that you're not going to get to heaven in a wheelbarrow. And that's what the people that ain't paying, even though they got money, ain't paying the church is going to go. That's what he said. You see, you see what I mean, bro, bro? Like, that seems like a threat more than a, let me give you the gospel. You get what I'm saying? That seems like a threat. Like, if you don't pay this money. To heaven in a wheelbarrow you go. Because he didn't want to yeah, say bro, to hell you go. What you t- Mel, to to heaven in a wheelbarrow you go. That's not like shade. Like why are you doing that, Pastor Thomas? Why That's you not doing like that? shade. It is he Pastor saying Tom the fiends Tom. are gonna be pulling a wheelbarrow and we know they ain't getting up there. Yeah, right? like what the fiends ain't, ain't how the fiends not how, not the you'll get up there in a wheelbarrow by the fiends though, not the angels. Sir, P- hmm. Pastor Thomas. Sounds like shade. You mean to tell me there's wheelbarrows in heaven, Pastor Thomas? Yeah, Pastor Thomas. Is that what you're saying? There's a store that sells wheelbarrows in, in heaven? heaven, Pastor Thomas? Is that what you're saying? What are you saying to me right now, or Pastor Thomas? Is it Thomas? wheelbarrow parking? <laughs> I was told by Apple Care that wings would be very prominent here. And you're telling <laughs> yeah, me you're ain't telling no me wings for no me. Wing. I will be the mm. wheelbarrow guy? You're going to make me be the mm. wheelbarrow guy in heaven, Pastor Thomas? Is that what you're saying? So mm. there's manual labor in heaven. Is that what you're saying, Pastor? You're telling me like that. somebody actually got to push somebody 
in heaven. Nobody's glad. Just because I didn't pay. Just because I didn't pay. Hmm. Mm, I don't know. Mm. I'm I'm sure, bro, like, I, I, and, and, and I am a very spiritual than Same. religious person. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, if you telling me that <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, All I right. won't get into heaven. If you're saying, if you're really saying that I won't get into heaven because I'm not paying the church, then yeah. Will Barrow, it is my guy. <laughs> Will Barrow me up, nigga, please. Friend. Yeah. Friend. <laughs> what is it? Let me get the last name because now I got to call him Pastor Adams because now I'm not attending your church no more. Now I right. can't be Pastor Adams. <laughs> Like okay, Pastor Adams, I'll I'll talk to you later, Pastor. Adams. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to go. I'm about to go get in line for this food, Pastor. I'm all yeah, right. let me go get my big giant turkey leg, nigga. All right. So now that we twenty brought up something that that um hell in the handbasket, hell hell gasoline draws on. We got Pastor Thomas introducing heaven in a wheelbarrow, which means the same thing, but when you're scared to say it with your chest. There's other variations uh, to mm -hmm. hell in a handbasket. So that's like when Southern people trying to be like rude, but they couch it in something else. What yeah. they say? Mm -hmm. What they no say shade. in New Orleans? Well, you know how it is. Like you know the whole bless your heart thing. Mm. Oh, <laughs> bless, baby. Your heart. bless your heart is so oh, shade, dog. Bless your heart. No, no, you don't want my heart to be blessed. You actually look at here, like just <laughs> like when you say it, but you ain't saying nothing, like that kind of thing. Or oh it'll God. just be like a compliment. Like this is the most the, the worst one. When it's a compliment, but you could tell by the look at their face that they are not yeah. complimenting you. Like this yeah. is this is none of this is nice. Yeah, yeah. You don't like my shirt, do you? Oh, you know who does that? What's her name? Tabitha Brown. When Wendy Williams came for her, oh she my said, gosh. Oh, what pain she must be in. Oh my God. Yeah, wait don't a think about pain. What's wrong with you? Wait a minute. I'm just trying to fight. You trying to fight fight. You must be hurting. You must be hurting. <laughs> oh that's man. that nice nasty. You don't want that. Yeah, that's a different type of that's a different type of. That's a that's somebody that might be willing to go to hell. That's a different guys. type of smoke right there. That's boy. a different type Just of smoke, man. Cuss me out and talk about my mama so I know what it is. Don't don't do that. Fusion is the worst when you're trying to figure out if you gotta put hands on somebody. Yeah, like don't you confuse me. Wait. Wait. Are we about to box? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm like, like, what's going on? Like, like I'm thinking about this too much right now. You know what I'm saying? I just really need to go off my raw emotions. But something is telling me that we need to talk it out. And something that, you know what I'm saying? Like that that phrase is telling me that maybe we should talk it out. Because I may have some pain in my heart that I need to get out. Yeah, do you want me? Are but you inviting again, me to vent to you? Yeah, it's are like you being my friend now? You know what I'm saying? Like it's one it's of those like situations, bro. Yes, it's like that scene in Forty Year Old Virgin where Kevin Hart is like, "You're using a lot of big words, and I don't know what, what they all mean." So I'm gonna take them as disrespect. <laughs> like I gotta make watch a your mouth <laughs> and make the sale. Yes, yeah. and you know what? That was my true introduction to Kevin Hart as well. So that is a near and dear quote to me, reference to me. I know twenty is a is a movie. On this show, 20 is the movie aficionado. So you've done two movie references that are probably near and dear to his heart. So that was, yes, we are doing the right thing. Oh, That's yeah, all I do is stay home and watch the Netflix. <laughs> oh, man. 1841. I do more of surfing through Netflix than actually watching on Netflix. No, not Netflix. I sit there Netflix. And try to find something for two hours when That's I could have trick. just put on goddamn Red Notice and watch that for like an hour and a half. You Red know what I'm saying? Notice. Like, oh, oh, my gosh. Simple. Netflix got them they, true crimes. They do. The, the, the pictures, the pictures make the the movie look super. The interface is great. They've done a like, good job. Man. They've done a good job. They kill the game in that. I don't think yeah. anybody is. They not nobody is because I will scour. I will yeah. I will scour. I will scour. All right, 1841, y'all. 1841, um, a publication. It was a ser uh, again back to the church sermon publication. The short patent of the sermons said those people. Who would rather ride to hell in a handcart than walk to heaven supported by the staff of industry? So this person, now I am now on board with 20 ML that this is damnation and condemnation. Cause now this dude is saying instead of supporting whatever industry the fuck it is, they'd rather go to hell than go to heaven by supporting us. Like just getting it's getting weird. In that same year, 
1841. Another version of the phrase can be found in Star, the Star of Freedom. Uh, and it says, Sanctify hypocrites will tell you not, and that do what you will. You are all to go to hell in the handbasket, thereby, in fact, making you mere passive creatures in this world, passive to their will. So basically, they're like, if you kind of have your own mind, you're just a passive, you're what, like your sheep or something? Uh, I don't know. And you're going to hell in the handbasket. Okay. And then, what is it? 14 years later, in 65, Winslow Iyer said, Judge Morris of the Circuit Court of Illinois. Oh, this is 1865. Yeah, 15 years later. The Circuit Court of Illinois, at an August meeting of Order of the Sons of Liberty, he said, thousands of our best men were prisoners in Camp Douglas. And if once at liberty would send abolitionists to hell in the handbag. So hell in the handbag was there. Hell in the handcart. And there's a couple more. So we got Hell in the Handbag, which was a little bit popular in the 19th century, the 1800s. And then you got Hell in the Bucket that was sometimes referenced. So the basket started that people just didn't really care. They just wanted you to get to hell. There's something that can hold your bitch ass up. <laughs> get you know, your ass to hell. We <laughs> don't use baskets no more. Yeah, like where's your bucket? All right, so I got to ask. I got to ask. I got to ask. I got to ask because I trust y'all. I trust y'all deeply. Which one we rolling with? I will name the list, and I want I'll give I'll give best answer and then like a a, a runner up, like an honorable mention. So we got Hell in the Handbasket, the original, mm-hmm. quote unquote. We got Hell in the Handcart, Heaven in a Wheelbarrow, Hell in the Handbag, or Hell in a Bucket. Mel, which one's the best one? And then if you want to give a runner up, you can, but you don't have to. I'm going to roll with the OG. I like hell in the hand, hand basket. Like, because you're saying it with your chest. You're saying what you mean. I don't have to suss it out. My runner up is hell in a bucket. <laughs> um, partially because of what a 20, 20 said. You don't, we ain't letting none of your bitch assness leak out. You, you in this bucket. So I, 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 I'm, I like hell in a bucket. Like, I'm not even using my good bag. You know how much wicker cloth I have? I'm not using my basket on you, nigga. Get the bucket. Get this like, bucket. I got like 50 plastic bags under this goddamn sink, but you know what? I'm going to put your bitch ass in this bucket. <laughs> 20. <laughs> what is now the- you know black people will put you in that <laughs> in that damn under sink <laughs> yeah, like plastic you know, bag and sink your ass down. To hell. Black folks are <laughs> like hell in the, in the shopping bag. A goddamn can, but half. 20 goddamn plastic bags. Wait, wait, wait. Now, why am I in it? Look, 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 look. I thought we were friends. Straight. Straight. 20, what's your favorite, man? What's your favorite? I would say, but I, I go hand basket. I mean, that's the only one really that I'm more uh, aware up, of. Black Dynamite? You know, what it, you know what time it is. Yeah, he, you know, he, know, he knew. He knew. What up, Black Dynamite? But, yeah, you know, okay. it's, it's one of those situations where I go hand basket, of course, because that's the only one that I really was aware of. And then I'm, I guess, I go, I go a bucket too as well, man, because just the wheelbarrow don't fit well with me. The handbag don't fit. You know what I'm saying? Like handbag too nice. This like, is one of those situations. The handbag to hell. I don't even like that. I feel like that's conflicting. Like you don't mean it. Mm-hmm. You don't mean it. that's why, like you said with your chest, because like handbag, like and if it's that bad, nigga, you can't fit all that shit in no handbag, man. Yeah, like get the mm-hmm. bucket. You need a big purse for that anyway. <laughs> exactly. You can't yeah, get sure. a handbag. A big yeah, that's just like for my lipstick, my phone. You exactly, know. bro. That's only a little bit of. That's only a little bit of bullshit. Yeah, yeah that ain't mm-hmm. enough to send ahead. Gotcha. Got you. Get all the you need your big purse. <laughs> yeah. Oh exactly. my gosh! All right, y'all. That was great. That was amazing. All right, let's. We we can't we can't end the show without appraising the phrase. The name of the show. Appraise the phrase. So let's appraise this phrase. Going to hell in the handbasket. Mel, I'm going to let you know how we do it. It's a three-part grading category, A through F grading scale. The first one is the power grade. 20 will take care of that. That is, does it have impact when it's said, when someone says it or hears it? Does they does it like, mm, mm, does it freeze you? Does it have impact? Does it land? Then we got the speed yeah. grade, just some eloquence flowing off the tongue, if you will. Um, I'll take care of that speed grade. And then we got the guest preference, which is, all inclusive, all your feelings, your personal use. Now that you know the origin, now that you know the meaning, you know what I'm saying. What we've explored, just thank you, bro. You know, so twenty power grade. Uh 
See, I'm trying not to be biased because, you know, this, like, I really got reintroduced to it just now. Mm -hmm. um, but for power, I would say C plus. Mm -hmm. I'll give it a C plus mm -hmm. only because, like, it's it's a situation of uh, it, it won't hit as hard if you don't know how to use it. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? Like if you, even if, because if you just say, you could just say it for anything and it won't hit as hard as unless you're using it the correct way. So I'll give it a C plus just because you have to have more knowledge about it as opposed to just using it and just figuring it out just by using it. Gotcha. I get that. Stamped. All right. Speed, hell in the handbasket. The alliteration jumps out the gym. Um, I think kind of what goes against its power leans itself towards its higher quality of speed like i could use that i think i could even see a young person using it because of the alliteration hell man i could mm -hmm. see that just being something fun to say for folks so that actually the speed with that the eloquence the, you know what i'm saying softness and sweetness to hear in that sense i'll give that a b i'm gonna go with b for speed Heard that. all right mel hit us right. i'm giving it a b mm. because I feel like it'll confound the youth <laughs> and I love confusing young people. Um, I, Cause I would say it to my kids and they were like, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. That's the part of it. Cause I just want to stop you in your yes. tracks. I just want you to stop. <laughs> but it's not something that I would use every day. It's something that I, that's, it's kind of one of those over the top things. Mm -hmm. And I like stuff right. that I can use, like what keeps me from giving it an A, it would be something that's just kind of flows all the time it's like at top of mind mm -hmm. and if i'm using hell in the hand basket i've gone deep into my bag so i'm like running out of stuff so it's kind of like the it's the back shelf the back part of the cabinet where the, spi the spices in the back that's where it is for me so yeah. i give it up like it's a b it's, it's it's got its its thing to it but it's not an everyday thing oh a b that's solid because I feel like it's more of an over exaggeration. Yeah, it does. You're, you're winning me. You're winning me, Mel, with the dramatic part. Like it is. Like you are being it's dramatic. It's more of an over <laughs> over exaggerate uh, over exaggeration now, mm. as opposed to a direct statement. Yeah, I think. Yeah. That, I think if I can piggyback off of both of you, it's like the farther away it's got from its true religious um, bullying. I'm willing to say uh, whatever. Then now it's like, oh, it's just it's just drama. It's a little bit, a little bit of drama to, to for your right. for, to your point, man. Like to get you to stop, like chill out, mm -hmm. think about this, or right. just like really, like this is what you're doing. This is like, art right, have you thought about that? This is where you're going with it. So yeah, yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm with that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Before we end the show, Mel, please give the listeners and viewers a way to connect with your work, support what you do, the whole nine. Let me do my stretches. Uh -huh. no, no, no. Roll, roll your shoulders. Okay, so um, first thing, um, like I said, I'm the community manager of ResistBot. One of the best things you could possibly do is use the tool. Um, we hear people talking about voting and, and you know, doing this and doing that. And a lot of people are frustrated with their elected representatives. Voting is not the only thing. There's so many other things that you can do to be engaged in that so many other factors of civic engagement, including organizers, the organizers where politicians are fa failing you, organiz organizers are out there doing the work, mm -hmm. organizers are creating petitions, organizers are making moves. And basically what ResistBot does is help organize the organizers. So absolutely utilize the tool, familiarize yourself when there, it is so, so easy. We make it so easy to either send off your own, a petition from someone else or create your own. It's literally text resist to 50409. It's mm -hmm. that simple and you can craft your own petition. So that's one, one thing you could do for me that is huge. As far as my work with ResistBot, Every morning I talk about the top three petitions, which aren't always things we see on the news. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I'm, I'm on Instagram. It's called Mel's Morning Mug. I'm still kind of finding my way with it, but that is, it's like about five minutes a day of talking about petitions, the news, all that good stuff. So that's me being smart. Yeah, <laughs> my, yeah, yeah. Other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I also have a podcast that I do with two really good friends who are stand-up comedians called The Bad Advice Show. 
we just launched our fifth season uh, today, as a matter of fact, we're recording. Thank you. Um, Sarone Russell and Gordon Baker Bone, who are fabulous people. We have been going hard for like five years now. And that's just us shooting the shit, being old and cranky <laughs> and, and, and giving terrible advice to the youth. And I also have, we have a Patreon where uh, if you go to Patreon slash Bad Advice Show, there's a secret or, or a paid podcast that I do called That Other Thing, where yeah. we talk about feelings and therapy and and relationships and not so much the man, woman arguing type of relationships, but actually what we are doing, how we navigate relationships within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I'm doing as far as podcasting. And you can catch me on social media. I run Resistbot social media. Um, and that's Resistbot everywhere. Again, of course, I'm on, um, you'll see me on Instagram, but I'm also doing tweets and setting up, sending Facebook messages. I'll have Twitter spaces. That's the thing Ooh, I yes, try to yes, do with yes, Twitter yes, space yes, once yes. a week. And then you can find me on Twitter. I'm the Gates of Mal. The O is a zero. And that is when I am probably yelling or free, laughing. Free. I like to... I like to mix it up. I like Word. to mix it up. So, <laughs> we go have it all in the show notes for y'all too. Like this, will, everything will be in the show notes. So no excuses. But hey, we are putting our money where our mouth is. Go support this resist. But I think it's huge. It helps for people like I, I just want to like speak to how much it's, it's just supported. Like someone who may be want to act, want to act really badly, may feel overwhelmed, may feel like you don't have the time. All those excuses that you give, those valid, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, but like it really streamlines. So get on it, use it, but also like, hey, hey, there's there's going to be opportunities to give. If, if, if you are the busiest person in the world, take a minute to breathe and give support. And that's how we're going to keep things like this rolling, y'all. And I want to, and I want to say it's not just something because the accessibility is not just something for people with big names, there's, or things that are on the news. Like mm -hmm. that is sometimes those, abortion affects everyone. Of course, we'll have abortion petitions, but right now our biggest petition is something that you're probably not going to see on the news. And it's about the Indian Child Welfare Act, mm -hmm. which I didn't know about <laughs> until mm -hmm. I got this petition, but that is the largest petition on resist bot. So this is something where we're really making this accessible for marginalized people who would not necessarily get the platform. And that in just a week has gotten 17,000 signatures. Let's get it. So Impact. the work is out there. We, we, we're working. There are good organizers who are serving it up for you on a platter and we're making sure that that gets elevated. So Impact. Yeah. We talking, we talking, we talking. Man. That's what it's about. This, this audience is getting wore out. All right, y'all can sit down. <laughs> So we're just doing we just doing a thing now. Now, really, literally now before we go, I said that three times. Now. Really, before we go, we got one more thing. So I'm going to pass it to my boy. 20. One more layer. <laughs> one more layer. Hey, I got one more. I got one more. And it one is one layer. The dictionary. Oh, of course. Of All right, Mel, this, was, this is one of my favorite. Well, I know Mario, too, as well. Yeah. I know a lot of uh, our guests. They love this part of the show. It's called the dictionary of misinformation. Did you hit him with that? Already? I hit it, but I, I can do know. it again, brother, if you like. For the people in the, the back. The Dictionary of Misinformation. Appreciate that. Appreciate Black Dynamite. That's right, Black Dynamite. <laughs> he just, he just, he, he a thought, man. He just wants to be on the podcast. He just he wants be to be heard. <sighs> but anyway, this is one of his favorite parts, too, as well. Uh, what we do <laughs> is we ask our guests for a letter, any letter, 1 through 26, we ask them not to go petty, but you know, when we don't ask them not to go petty, they go petty. Go so we're gonna go ahead and mention it. Don't go petty because X is already used up. <laughs> X X is already used up, so you can't go X. But uh just pick a letter and what we do is we try to take that letter. No, not try, but we take that letter and uh we give you a little bit of misinformation about something that starts with that letter that you've probably been misinformed about. So at this time, Mel, before uh, Black Dynamite chooses your letter, uh, <laughs> can you go ahead and uh, pick a letter for us? I'm picking, uh, I'm picking a letter. Yep. A letter, yes, Mel. Okay. Uh, we'll go with R. Five seconds. Uh, no. <laughs> R. 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 Here we go. Here we go. 
and I have to sometimes do. I my think this is the first R too. Well. This see, I, I don't remember an R, man. So this is fun. Me either. Me either. It's fun. Look at me breaking uh, chains. Look at you. <laughs> look at you. <laughs> look at you. Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, 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 hold on. All right. No, nah, man. Usually Mario does this. It says, "No, nah, we ain't gonna use that." No, no, no. We're gonna do this one. <laughs> I don't care if I have to okay. read it thoroughly. Because we're going R, and it's another sign of the time. So thank you, Mel. The right to keep and bear arms. <laughs> right. Right. Start with R. Yeah, I'm doing it. And we can just see. So the second article of the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution reads, in whole, not in part, in italics finished, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Nothing in the Constitution forbids the right of federal or state governments to make any gun control laws that they wish in terms of an individual who is not a member of a well-regulated re re militia. So just looking back <laughs> at the camera and everyone, <laughs> unless <laughs> you're in a goddamn regulated militia, which we heard are some folks are in and some folks are not, those are the only people that can um, be affected by like, that. So yeah. yeah, like, okay, okay. So let's just wake so up. So it just can't be any... Anybody that just want to get an AR-15 and be like, no, 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 I ain't. And you let's talk be... about this regulated. Hey, hold on, hold on, man. We don't, we don't discuss. We don't discuss what we uh. <laughs> it's just, it's just a fact. We give you the information, and then we say, you know what? We don't want, we we don't want no problems. We don't want no arguments. That's how. Oh, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not arguing with nobody. I'm just. Mm -hmm. Point out the yeah. point outs. Mm -hmm. Point out the point outs. Point out the point outs. Yeah. Point out the point outs. I just know what I heard. Because Mel is asking y'all. <laughs> okay, y'all. All right, y'all. All right, we got Hey, you know what? We are, I am going to make y'all stand up one more time because we have been honored to have Mel Dion on the show. Of course, anything we can do to continue to support our uh, listeners, the Underdog Podcast Network, brought, we're brought to you by them. Y'all, go support. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube for the visuals. My man 20 in the building. 20. Never took the and, yes, sir. And you can always remember, and you should always remember, that value is in the eye of the appraiser. We will check y'all next week. Y'all be good, man. <laughs>